Hey everyone, welcome back to the Alberta Roundup. I'm your host, Rachel Emanuel. For today's interview, we are joined by Richard Durr. Durr is the executive director of Pro-Life Alberta, which is a political party dedicated to educating Albertans on the horrors of of abortion. Richard, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. So you drew my attention to an interesting story this week. It seems that there is a new abortion clinic here in Calgary. It's called the Alberta Medical Abortion Clinic that's offering chemical abortions. And this is something that you were very concerned about. You said this is something that damages women more so than regular abortions. Can you explain what the difference is between a chemical abortion and a typical abortion procedure and why it's so dangerous for women? Sure. So uh, when I first heard about the uh, this facility, it made me think of uh, back alley abortions um, in the way that we're moving the back alley abortion to the bathroom. These things are done in secret. They're high risk. They're often done without proper medical attention. And the potential for dangers and the risks of complications, abuse and misuse are um, very high uh, when it comes to chemical ab- abortion. So for example, when it comes to chemical abortions, there's a, uh, they can only be done in early first trimester uh, pregnancies. So uh, the, the, what's important then is determining uh, correctly the gestational age of, uh, of the preborn child. And um, there's a risk then of if you're only relying on uh, a woman's best guess or estimate as to how far along she is, uh, you can uh, increase then the risks uh, to her um, of, of complications. So some of the symptoms as well between an ectopic pregnancy and those resulting from chemical abortions um, are, they're the same. So there's higher rates of complications than there are in surgical abortions. And these complications can lead to the death of both the mother and her baby. Wow. Yeah. I saw on a site that I was reading about earlier, Pregnancy Help News, it said that the there's 10 times the death rate for women with chemical abortions and with surgical abortions. Are you familiar with those statistics as well? I, I, I've seen various uh, statistics from different sources. I know it depends as well as to, um, there's even complications, increased complications compared to surgical abortions, um, even when it's taken within the prescribed and ideal, so to speak, period of time. Uh, when chemical abortions are supposed to be taken, even then there's higher risk of of complications than there are with surgical abortions. But of course, there's also the increased risk that the chemical abortion will be administered uh, at an inopportune time or beyond uh, the first few weeks of of pregnancy uh, when it's not supposed to be taken. Um, And that then, uh, of course, increases the risks of complications still further. So, So like I said, I mean, it reminds me of uh, it makes me think of back alley abortions uh, moving from the back alley to the bathroom where we have high risk abortions done in secret without proper medical attention. Uh, and, and women, um, you know, we should be safeguarding women's health and well-being. Uh, and we don't do that by uh, allowing a um, free for all when it comes to the um, prescription of chemical abortion pills. Something else that I read online earlier, and it seemed almost too horrible to be true, was that in the cases of chemical abortions, there's instances where women can then pass their baby. And there's been some instances where the baby has been passed and the baby is still alive. So women are typically doing this at home in their own washroom. And so they're seeing, you know, their their little baby in the toilet there. And in some cases, that baby can still be alive. Is this something that can happen with chemical abortions? Uh, um, uh, Yes, it could. Absolutely. If it's, uh, again, uh, without... Um, women deserve the on- ongoing care of a doctor when taking high risk drugs. So without that ongoing care of a doctor, there's risks for all sorts of complications that these things will be improperly administered, that it'll be administered in an incorrect order, uh, or any number of things besides. Uh, one of the other things that is, I guess, a concern when we're looking at chemical abortions that are being ministered at home is, you know, these women are maybe speaking with a doctor over something like Zoom. They're not actually doing the in-person visits. How likely is this something that will affect vulnerable women or even women that are in situations where they're being trafficked? I think that's an excellent insight. There is a heightened risk of exploitation to vulnerable women and a likelihood then of, of prolonging the trafficking of women without detection 
uh, there should be a requirement in abortionists to uh, uh, to screen for possible trafficking, exploitation, and coercion. And when it comes to telemedicine, if anything, it lends itself towards the abuse and misuse of uh, of abortion in such a way that um, uh, that those women who are being exploited will continue to be exploited uh, because there's no no avenue in which that exploitation can be detected. Your chemical abortions very common in Alberta. I know that you guys at Pro-Life Alberta drew attention to this clinic especially, but is it something that we've seen in the province so far, or is this really a rarity that this has been able to open? I, I think it is increasing in part because of the, so to speak, convenience of it. Um, but like I said, it reminds me or makes me think of the back alley abortion or moving the uh, abortions from the back alley to the bathroom, uh, high risk, done in secret and without proper medical attention uh, that, uh, that puts uh, women's lives at risk. And do we know what the impact could be on the water supply as well? Obviously, when we're looking at this, there's these little babies that will become biohazard waste in the water. And then the chemicals of the drug itself are these things that can be you know, easily filtered out or is this damaging the water supply increasingly over time? I'm, and, and that's the thing. I mean, I don't know as to, uh, and I don't think we do know as to that, but I do think it's, um, you know, with, with the concerns that we have in the environment and what we're putting into our water supply, if we're having thousands upon thousands of chemical abortions and these, uh, the products of conception, which is to say that the, the uh, aborted child is just flushed down the toilet, um, what's going to happen of that? Like it doesn't, that, that will inevitably end up in our water supply in, in uh, some way. So these are things that we need to look at. Uh, and it's a reason why chemical abortions should be removed from uh, telemedicine platforms and why we should uh, make adverse reporting mandatory to help track and address uh, complications surrounding uh, abortions and surrounding chemical abortions, especially. Right. It is quite shocking to think of. I mean, we obviously take so much care and we show a lot of respect to human bodies when someone passes and all the burial proceedings that go along with that. And in this case, sure, the water supply and the damage that can be done there and the impact it will have on people is huge, but also just the disrespect and the dishonor shown to these little babies as they're flushed down the toilet. It's honestly just too sickening to really comprehend. I'm really glad that you guys have raised attention to this issue. Before I let you go, you know, people are going to be wondering what they can do about this. What's your call to action on this matter? Well, on this, I would encourage uh, um, I would encourage people to reach out to their MLA and reach out to uh, our UCP Health Minister Adriana Lagrange to let her know that chemical abortions are not worth the risk. Uh, that women and their babies deserve better than abortion, uh, and that women deserve the ongoing care of a doctor when taking high risk drugs. Uh, and so, therefore, we should be removing chemical abortions from telemedicine platforms uh, to safeguard women's health and well-being. Richard, thank you so much. To the rest of my audience, we will be back on Saturday with our regular coverage. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any additional comments for Richard, just put them in the comment section below and uh, we'll get back to you on those. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. I'll see you all on Saturday. God bless.